you know, that's a, I don't know about that one. It's, it's, a big, it's a big glacier. And I think most people would have a hard time visualizing that from the lower 48 or from some other place in the world because we don't have structures. We don't have structures in our normal life that size. I think it'd be hard to come up with something 20 miles by three miles wide, you know, 60 square miles of ice. I think that'd be hard to uh, visualize if you haven't seen it, you know. I don't know how I'd describe that. You know, it'd be hard to. I've never been here before. I guess if, if you could imagine, um, let's see, for someone who's never been to a glacier, it might be like maybe vast fields in the plains of the Midwest and you're driving through them and instead of being uh, corn as far as I could see, you could have ice as far as I could see, you could be in the middle of it. And, and like that, those fields, you, if you, there's so much relief that if you were with somebody walking and they were a little bit away from you, they would disappear in some hill or some valley in the glacier. Ooh, I always talk about ice cubes. <laughs> How many ice cubes would it take to make a 20 mile long pile of ice that's 2,000 feet deep? Just think about that when you're lifting your gin and tonic. <laughs> because it, 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 it is a huge amount of ice. To describe to someone who's not actually here, it, it, it's hard to capture. You know, photographs do it some justice, but actually getting on the ice and realizing how big it is is, is, is a, a, a lifetime event for a lot of people. And I would recommend going to a park and <laughs> visiting it and, and learning about the dynamic change. <laughs>